Welcome. Thanks for giving us the stage to share some ideas, some insights, and yeah, we start with our presentation with a short intro of ourselves. Hi, everybody. Hello. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is my name is Gaussia. I'm a data ops engineer and a diversity enthusiast, and I work on the Wayang project. And my name is Mirko. I'm using Apache software for more than two decades, but last year I finally became a bit more active and joined the Apache training team, and recently also Apache Wayang. And why are we here, here in Bratislava today? That's because we want to connect to people within the community. We want to collect insights from more experienced people regarding community work and also we want to help our projects, the projects we are contributing to, to reach the next level. We want to grow from the incubator into top level projects. This relates to training and also to Vayam. Here's our agenda, four parts. We introduce what both incubator projects are about. We speak about the role of non-technical contributions in the community and also we share some insights and the proposal at the end. Let's kick it off. Introduction to Vayang okay. by Glossier. Okay, so let's start t talking a little bit about what is Apache Vayang. So Apache Vayang is a unified data processing framework that integrates other resources seamlessly um, and orchestrate multiple data platforms. As you can see here on the, on the images, the idea of Wayang is to create an abstraction layer between other, uh, other tools like Spark, Flink, JDBC, Gyra, uh, Flink, sorry, I already spoke about Flink, uh, Kafka, uh, and so on, to create a better integration between the data sources. And one of the, the two ongoing projects that Wayang uses today is about the data integ platform integration and uh, y in the Wayang optimizer. The Wayang optimizer is a machine learning query optimizer that reduces the time of the query when Wayang is doing all the job. So as you can see below here, the time for Wayang was very slightly different from the other ones. So comparing with system L, Spark ML and Wayang, Wayang had the better performance between the other two. So, Klausia, you tell us what is it is doing, what problem is Wayang solving? Wayang also solves another problem, which is the federated learning. So, the idea of Wayang is to also create, to train the model without anyone seeing or touching your data. So, based on that, if you... Okay. If you based on what the idea of the federated learning is, collect data from a sense from a local model without touching the data, processing it, and using other platforms to processing it, and send it back to the local again, and collecting all the results on the mod, uh, based on the model, aggregating all the models. So this is uh, this is a project that can apply uh, easily to hospital or health researchers. <coughs> So we don't want to touch the data because of data privacy and other stuff like that. So the idea here is to just sharing the model and collecting the results of the training models. But okay, now tell me a little, oh, and about the data cross-processing I was saying before, we have Wayang as a coordinator between the other data platforms and the other data sources. So that's the abstraction layer that I was talking about. So. Tell me a little bit about Apache Training. Apache Training, another incubator project, which is in the incubator since 2018. It started with one mission, with one goal. They attempted to avoid rewriting the same presentation and training material again and again. The idea was to come up with a repository, with a collection of training material, which can be reused by different parties and what they achieved so far is a bunch of stuff in order to provide a sharp and focused training material it has been worked on tooling which allows us to collaborate on training material and the idea is to 
link creators of technical documentation to the creators of the technical solution. So the people who create code and solve a technical problem are not always the same people who write the documentation and linking these two groups of people together within the community is also one of the important goals of Apache training but this hasn't been yeah, achieved so far. What we already have is some repositories or one repository with some tooling in it and our result when we apply these techniques would be reduced time for material creation, less time rewriting existing material again and again. Improved knowledge sharing would also be a good effect because when people start talking about what the solution is about and how is it working and others document and write about it, hopefully the information flows a bit better than by just being on your own and digging into the code. And finally, projects will become more accessible for a wider audience, even an audience of not so skilled developers who can then learn based on existing training materials. This is a very important thing. And so far we have collected, not we, the community has collected 18 slide decks from different projects, 15 if you count them. Four slide decks are there from conferences. Question, five or six years, are there only four conferences around? And are there only four presentations on these four conferences? Probably not. So we see there is a lot of potential if people just would know where to bring their contribution to. And so we have currently in this one repository two important folders. One, the content folder, where existing presentations are collected and shared, and another folder where the tooling is collected. And so we have two different audiences content contributors and tooling developers. And this is a little bit a strange mix. And sometimes we refer to this idea non-technical contribution. So I try to bring up a friend to the ASF who is not a te technical guy. He is a teacher, he is a trainer, but we did not make it yet to include him in the procedures, into the workflow, but that's still something we can achieve on the long run. But this is where we are, this is what we have today but there are a bunch of gaps. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. What we have missing on the past training? So we observed that there is a huge gap in the availability of a process or of procedures for fast material creation. We are just slow and sometimes we are just not connected. We do not know who has the material or the knowledge and so it's very hard to bring these pieces together. And then we also observe that there is not huge awareness, or maybe awareness, yes, but no drive behind it. People are aware how important documentation is, but they don't really handle it. That's a huge gap. And if you bring up some existing training material in PDF form or whatever format you have, it's a technical limitation because converting these documents into the source code repository it's a bunch of work and it's a hard process. It hasn't been solved yet. So those are current problems which have to be solved somehow on the tooling level. But how is your experience with Vayang? What is missing in the Vayang community right now? Okay, thinking about the Vayang perspective, what we have today is we are lacking of the guidance or how we can contribute on the project. Because we lack of documentation about how Vayang is. And um, we need like more training materials as like Apache training is uh, willing to help us but we don't have this path well defined yet. We need to define better what are the, the trainings that we need and the documentations that we need. But also uh, the other thing that we have is like the clarity of some concepts. Wayang is created by a group of researchers and sometimes we have a lot of academical terms and when we think about that on a software engineer perspective, we are not fully aware of those terms. So when you get in touch with Wayang, it can be confusing sometimes. But of course, we also have between those two projects uh, some other, uh, some other uh, points that, we, that are missing. For example, we lack of 
activity and collaboration between the development of the code and the no technical contributions are very rare, are really rare. So what I mean with no technical contributions, I mean, let's, under, before that, just a second, I'm kind of nervous. Um, before that, let's understand a little bit what is no technical contributions and why they are so important to us. So no technical contributions are very important to open source projects because they don't require, first they don't require any technical skills and everybody can help them. So if you are not a coder, if you are not a software engineer, you can help. And what really matters by the end of the day is that everybody's collaborating with each other and making the community great. So why no technical contributors are so uh, important to us? because they are really important for the sustainability of the community. And when I mean sustainability of the community, I mean um, maintain documentation, I mean maintaining uh, issue, GitHub issues and, and other stuff like that. So uh, it keeps the community straight. So it keeps the, the community glued together because we are not missing any gaps. And of course, when we have people from different skills and mindsets, we also have uh, different points of view with different ways of collaboration. So, but at the end of the day, what are these non-technical contributions? I'm talking, about, uh, I'm talking about GitHub issues. I'm talking about uh, documentation. Oh, one previous. Oh, never mind. I'm talking. Okay, I'm talking about GitHub issues. I'm talking about get involved with social media, like spreading the word. That's what I mean. Uh, I mean getting the social media and, for example, in Wyong, saying, "Hey, have you heard about federated learning?" Um, translating documents. This is so important when we have a, a global community because not everyone is a full expert on English. Why not having this on Chinese? Why not have this on Spanish? So this is very important to us and also improving our examples and our training materials because, for example, Wayang was struggling uh, because somebody wanted to use Wayang, but we didn't have much of examples besides our word count uh, to explain how Wayang works. So if we could manage to have other examples, we'd be awesome for the community and for engaging with other people. So based on all that, we did some research. So some research was needed because when I joined this project, I was running down pretty fast into a deep rabbit hole. What does it mean? I focused on thinking what tool could we build for training, for Apache training, with what tool could we save time? There was the assumption we have not enough time to document well. So, okay, if we have no time, we should save time. But then I realized this is the wrong question. And in order to find out what is the right question to ask regards training, we said, let's do a survey, let's speak to other people, to other people in the community, and here, yeah, was this the right start? Obviously, the idea was clear. We should ask other projects regarding their needs. But here already, we had a problem. Probably we did it wrong. We do not yet know, but we have to figure out, did we really start the conversation and communication on the right channel? It was not clear. Okay, we started, we tried, and besides this observation that the communi communication channels and the procedures are not really clear for an outsider who joins the community, we figured out that at least seven contributions from six projects gave some feedback. So we got some insights, we collected the answers from other people to find out what do the individual Apache projects need when we speak about training material or training activities. And this is what we compiled now. We have found a list of five pain points. We go through the top three now. The first of all, it was mentioned that there is no formal process towards documentation creation, especially towards training documentation or training material. There is no formal process. But there is one for code. 
How is this in Apache Bayang? What is your experience in this? I can relate it very much to that because on Bayang we are missing, for example, as I said before, the glossary. We don't have a glossary for the academical terms and we are missing documentation about how to use the other drivers that Bayang support. And that, make, that makes the, the a little bit harder to start getting used to start using uh, Wayang, for example. So what we thought about, what we think about it? Well, we could like do some co-working sessions, pair programming sessions. It don't need to be anything fancier, but could be something we can do together. And I want to add to this point, this co-working session, it's something we are used to do. We do co-working, we do co pair programming and all the other techniques. We sit together. If we know each other, it's easy to reach out to somebody and to sit together solving a problem. But if you don't know the people, for me it was not clear, should I go to Christoph or should I go to Klausia? Just ping them for, for them. I'm a stranger. I'm a person they don't know. Is this the right way to get connected? And I was not sure about it and just tried it out. And then the result was, the more I got connected to the right people, the better it was. And from this, we can derive a conclusion. Other people can do the same. So besides asking for the right process, I think we should start talking to the people, not to the right people. If the person is not the right one, they probably can forward the connection to the next person. And this insight, I think that's very valuable. And it brings us to our second pain point. We have not sufficient training materials for users. There is code, there is software, but people who want to use the artifacts of our work. Yeah, and yeah, and on the Wayang perspective, uh, this is very clear. As, again, as I mentioned it before, uh, some other groups try to reach us to understand how we can apply Wayang on different scenarios, but. We don't have yet an, uh, uh, some examples on how to work, uh, work with a young. So we need to separate a session or we need to contact some of our researchers to understand how we can use that in a specific scenario. But that could be easily improved if we, we uh, invest in creating uh, training materials, if we update them regularly, and if we write the, our documentations. And this brings us to the third pain point, we have a problem sometimes to understand who is the right person or who has the right skills, who is doing what. So defining the roles of individual contributors is an essential thing. If you are a member of the community and know each other, then it's straightforward. But for the newcomers from outside, this is sometimes very unclear, very hidden. And how was it in Wayang? How is this experience? Yeah, so in Wayang we also have this miscommunication about what, some, what everybody's doing. Like, I don't know if somebody in the project is working on a specific driver or working on the query optimizer. And this missing communication sometimes leads uh, to a duplicated work or to sometimes not doing or investing time on other things because we are not communicating with each other. So the key point here, I believe, it, to enhance what we, what we have is to improve our communication, is to inform uh, about what, everybody, what somebody is working on what, and of course, making the goals accessible for everyone. So, and then this brings us to this question again. Is it really time which is missing? What do you think? Is the time our biggest problem? I don't think so. I don't think time is the biggest problem we have here. I think uh, we are lacking uh, on, the on the communication part. If somebody would ask us, what would you choose? More time or better communication? From what we have learned over the last months, I would go for better communication. Time is endless. It's up to us how we utilize our time. That's the point. It's not the time itself. It's how we work with our time and what our focus is. And so I couldn't stop rethinking the procedure or the process. And I asked myself, where are the people taking the motivation from? Community members who build some cool stuff in an open source context. They have the opportunity to learn more skills while they are working on this software. They make contributions, but then we reach some level where they are bound or blocked or limited. And I use this symbol here this Maslow pyramid where you just 
symbolize what you need as a human being. But the point is, as a human being, as a contributor, you work in the context of the community, which is a thing besides it. And when we look into the infrastructure, the Apache Software Foundation gives great infrastructure, the rules, the processes are there. There is a certain amount of guidance. And if you look what a person does, it starts on the left-hand side with a high intrinsic motivation as a contributor. This leads to incubation mode. People grow into this organization, into the community, but then it feels like being blocked. Like I said in the beginning, as a person, I was not yet interconnected with the people. And if we look into this picture, the gap is here exactly the layer in between. The social interactions, if you have some people you know already, it's so easy to jump into this community. But if you don't have these connections yet, it's not that easy. But to us, it looks like the major problem, the social interactions and the communication. That's why we vote for better communication, rather more time. More time doing the same wouldn't solve the problem, but maybe by focusing on the right things, on the right connections, joining the energy from Bayang and training. This is what we think is the next step for both projects to be able to, yeah, to step up to become a top-level project. And here we show what we do now. Directly after the conference, we continue and bring these artifacts from Apache Bayang into the training repository. So we thought about what kind of documentation is needed for somebody who wants to introduce what Bayang is. Here's a list, intro, a concepts presentation, an architecture overview, a prerequisites documentation to let others know what they must know before it makes sense for them to join as a user, as a contributor, and so on. And maybe this is an example which could be adopted by other projects as well. Yeah, and then there is our call into this room, into the ISF community in general. Please be a little bit more interactive and maybe a little bit proactive. So when some project works on a new module, on a new concept, just document it, maybe even before you release it, and share this information. Let others know and bring people who can help you on the non-technical level in so that not all the work is loaded to the engineers, but so that our community grows also in a way where non-engineers can help us to make this community some long-living, some sustainable thing. And during the release process, why not adding another item on the release process checklist? It is already long enough, so there is room for another item. Review and share the documentation. And make documentation part of your release, of your source release. That's what we learned in the last session here. And then we came up with the idea, why not doing a hackathon-like event, but not focusing on implementing new features, but rather on showcasing what's already there, what's already working, on integrating ideas and solutions explicitly. On a fair, in a booth, the demos are pretty, uh, are pretty narrow, pretty sharp. You have not enough time to go deeper, but in a hackathon session where you can come, demonstrate how things work, and others, they do the recording. So the material appears more or less out of nowhere because of the community idea. We do not have to plan for that. We can come together with the things, with the skills and the knowledge we have. And if we add some more non-technical contributors, this should be pretty easy. Writing software is not the easiest thing, but the community managed it. Why should we fail managing non-software stuff around it? So that's our idea and our hope that we can motivate some people yeah, to join in an event which has the hackathon style, but is focused on bringing together what is already there and starting the next cycle, kicking it off from these insights. And that's all what we have prepared for today. Thank you very much. Thank you.